This film tells the story of the Last Tree Dreaming Project. How it came about. What it involved. And what it achieved. You'll find out what's so special about this tree and its connection to the great forest of Selwood. I'm Douglas Williams, also known as Dougie. I was a part of the first group from Froome College that uh, started the project on the tree. It was strange because I never expected it to be what it was. It was like, yeah, this is going to be another kind of academic thing where we, we put some effort into it and then we won't ever see the end result. I know you're going to think, how how did you make this, this jump? But um, I, I, to be totally honest, I can't describe how much it kind of did change you as a person because you 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 had something to care for and you had something to look forward to and um you could work and it was it was very professional you could work in a team um you could look after it you can understand different things and you can write lots of things about it but at the end of the day it was definitely a group project that everyone was kind of into really how did you become involved in the project? So the project was uh, it was pitched to us by uh, Barry and Azima. My name's Barry Cooper and um, I'm the artist who uh, began the project. He came to us and, and basically pledged his idea. I was approached by uh, Barry Cooper. He knew that young people from the charity worked with groups of young people on various different projects. So he came to us, an employability group from uh, from college. We were a bunch of individuals. We weren't really a team. So I think this is that was the it was probably the thing we needed, basically to, uh, to to straighten us out. He was interested in involving young people in a community arts project around this ancient tree. He had this amazing idea of bringing it back to life basically, re re um, resurrecting the tree. He would get young people, people who've just started life, people who've got their futures ahead of them, to carve into this 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 old kind of fallen tree and make it a pillar of uh, the community and young people. How did the project really begin? Uh, Barry was walking with his, uh, with his family through Stourhead and saw this tree that's uh, that fell down unfortunately in these strong winds. A tree which was found in Stourhead February 2013. It had fallen in a storm, um, it was about 80 foot tall. It was in very good health in terms of the trunk but the roots were rotten. By approaching Stourhead and asking them to donate the tree to Froome College, which they did, we devised a project to transport the tree from Starhead to Froome College and ultimately to re-erect it on the Froome College site. What's so special about this tree? At that moment I didn't realise it was in the, the famous uh, painting by Turner. It was in a painting by J.M.W. Turner in 1798 when it was 30 years old. It wasn't until we went on the first day that we could actually see the kind of job that was that was in in hand. Um, it was it was just led there, sorry, state. It didn't look too uh, interesting at the time. So quite a few of us wasn't really interested in it till we basically learned more about the whole environment of Stourhead and the people who may have come into contact with it. The Stourhead Forest, um, Anthony, who was a sculptor, he came and um, painted a, a lovely picture of Stourhead Forest for us. Barry got in touch with me. He was looking for some ideas on what was the best way to carve into the into the tree. So we had to, first off, uh, remove all the bark. So we, we, we involve students in the actual physical task of, of stripping all the bark off it. We, I think this took about four or five weeks of just hard work. Well, it wasn't really, we didn't see it as work or a chore, it was definitely fun, because you could socialise with your friends, you could get work done, you can work towards uh, a goal, basically. And I think that was, that was good for everyone to kind of, to look forward to. You've got a several inches of quite soft uh, wood around the heartwood. That would have decayed quite quickly. So we came up with the idea of cutting these niches, little holes into the tree, which the students could then carve into. And, and that in itself took a lot of work. It was a tedious job, but unfortunately it kind of 
paid off. So we, we debarked the whole tree and it got to the part where we were carving into it. What's the idea about carving into the tree? To tattoo this tree with carvings done by young people. Putting their designs then onto the, onto the, the wood and um, carving their designs in. And that's really what, what the part I was playing in it. If you put it into like bold words, it is it's it's carving into a tree that fell down. But if you if you look deeper into it, if you if you uh, just walk the whole journey of it, I believe it's it's it is like you are in touch with someone that touched the tree what three or four hundred years ago. When we carved onto it, it is basically like a tattoo on a tree. We couldn't rub a bit out. It had to be perfect the first time. So we, we were constantly going through the same design, uh, just making sure we we get it so we can absolutely know what we're gonna be putting onto the tree. And everyone had amazing ideas how to carve and what to carve and how it re would represent them for the future, basically. We were just looking into to putting something that we could say, yes, we, we helped there. We we uh, we wanted to do this for, for people to look at and I think that was brilliant really. How have young people been involved in the project? It's been really important for us to find ways to work with young people and it's great now we've got you guys from doing the Duke of Edinburgh to you know be involved in this filmmaking aspect. The film can be used again and again by the community and maybe it will make people in the future do a similar project. It was 100% youth input and Azima and Barry and everyone else was there just to kind of guide us along the journey. So we got a, basically a council together to kind of discuss what we think should happen to the, 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 the tree, how the project was going to run and then how we were going to write grants and stuff to get this project up and running. We took a group of the art students from Froome Community College up to the Turner uh, collection at Tate Britain to interview the curator and ask him about Turner's motivations for doing that painting which featured the tree. And so he invited him to come to Starhead to make some watercolours. Primary schools, we worked with St John's and Trinity and they came and did some of the carving work various community days, children, young people, families coming. One of the, the activity days which um, I made a spoon greatly, yeah, it was uh, whistling and uh, basically a forest school day for everyone to come along and just learn about the, the group. Wood carving, whittling, you know these are all traditional skills that young people would have once readily known if they lived in or near the forest. So those are the, some of the ways in which we've been working with children and young people. What's the story behind Selwood Forest and the start of Froome? That tree was also part, historically, of the larger Selwood Forest. We developed the idea of exploring the whole history of Selwood Forest, the heritage of the forest which surrounded that tree in 800 AD. There was a story that I'd put together about the founding of Froome and the open storytellers obviously enjoy playing with story and also um, acting out stories, so they came to collaborate with us on the project. Well, the construction team was made up of uh, local businesses, local artisans, some of which were paid for the work that they did and others provided it on a free of charge basis and they all collaborate together to come up with a finished product. The tree and the base and they have to fit just perfectly together. It's a standard engineering solution. What is the aim of the project? What do you want the project to achieve? That young people will be able to take part in a work of art uh, which will be a um, permanent work of art on the college campus for a very long time, possibly another 250 years. It's a thing you can basically stand there for about an hour and just wonder what it is, why it's there. The carvings on that tree will still be evident 
when the tree has been re-erected and then after 50 years it's been laid down again, your grandchildren will be able to see all the carvings that were done 50 years beforehand and the tree will then be laid on the ground to, to gradually decompose. And that's a lot of people who's going to be, their sculpture is going to be there for a long time in a tree that's been around for a, a, a lot longer. It's a symbol of basically myself really. Um, and from and people who involved in it. Even if you don't know too much about it, it's definitely an eye catcher. So you, it makes you want to, to, to learn about it. I think everyone will learn different things about it and it become a community symbol because it is, um, it's amazing. I show it off quite a lot actually, um, especially to a lot of my friends because they probably think, oh, it's just a tree, but it's not. It's it's a lot more than that. I think it's brilliant. You know, we want to encourage people to think about the future, planting trees, trying to put back some of the Selwood forest that, you know, once existed. It's it's ridiculous to think that that tree would have standed in the middle of, what, another 30,000 trees. And it's had that journey. It survived many, what, two world wars, uh, many, everything that nature could have thrown at it to fall that down for us and we could rebuild it and put some effort into it to make it into a, a brilliant sculpture. It, it makes the world seem so small compared to what it was. It does make you realise where you are and what you're capable of.